Hey guys, and welcome back to another How to FPV series video. And this is actually going to be specifically geared towards lithium polymer batteries. And I'm going to tell you all the hints, tips, and secrets that I have to help prolong the life of your batteries. Because if you've ever owned or dealt with lithium polymer batteries, you've probably had one puff into a big pillow and you don't understand why it's puffed and you don't understand why you can't revive it. Well, I'm gonna to try to tell you all I can about lithium polymer batteries today, especially from a basic standpoint, we're gonna break down individual cells and talk about the voltage range from fully charged to fully discharged and the healthy rates that you can discharge these things and charge them and ultimately, what works and what doesn't work in the real world because there are some things that you'll hear from manufacturers and from other people that don't actually work when you're talking about using these things in the real world. So first of all, I'd like to talk about lithium polymer batteries as a whole. We do have multi-cell batteries here. So this is a four cell battery and a six cell battery and a two cell battery. So they usually have a connotation of S. It might say 2S, 4S, 6S. You get the idea. The number of S means the number of cells in the battery. So for example, that means that we have four cells in this particular four cell battery. Well, we need to take one of these cells out so that we can talk about one lithium polymer battery because this is four lithium polymer batteries in one battery. So if we take one of those cells out, we have a single cell lithium polymer battery and we have a range of voltage that the thing likes to operate in, okay? So fully charged at 4.2 volts and fully discharged at 3.5 volts. Yes, there are batteries that go beyond 4.2 volts, and yes, people will say you can drain them below 3.5 volts, but from a general generic standpoint, 4.2 to 3.5 is pretty much what manufacturers say that the healthy range of voltage is for one cell lithium polymer battery. Now, if you wanna do the math and you have four cells, we'll talk about four cell, six cell, and two cell. You just literally add the cells together. If you have a four cell and you have them fully charged, that's 16.8. 16.8 divided by 4.2 is four. That's four cells and that's fully charged, okay? So we'll talk about the range of volts, or the range of volts that you can charge these things to and we'll talk about how far you can discharge them before it starts to degrade the quality of the battery, okay? So first of all, we're gonna talk about two different types of batteries. We're gonna talk about flight packs because we like to treat those a little bit differently than we like to treat batteries like accessory batteries. So this is a Tyrannus battery, this goes inside my radio, and this is a Fat Shark battery, this is what powers my goggles. So those things we can treat a little bit differently, but we'll talk about that after we talk about flight packs because flight packs are the most important thing. So flight packs are gonna be dealing with a lot of abuse. So when you talk about lithium polymer batteries taking a lot of abuse, you have to kind of treat them a certain way or you will ultimately kill the battery very quickly or reduce the life extremely significantly, okay? So first of all, let's talk about 4S batteries because that is the standard, all right? If I'm gonna charge a 4S battery, I'm gonna charge it to 16.8 volts. If I'm gonna discharge a 4S battery, like I'm gonna go fly it and I'm gonna land at a certain voltage, I'm usually going to take about 80% of the capacity of the battery. So for example, if this is a 1000 milliamp battery and I wanna take 80% of that capacity, you literally just 80% of 1000 is 800 milliamps. So I can safely drain 800 milliamps from a 1000 milliamp battery and I can be between that range of 4.2 volts and 3.5 volts. Theoretically, that's what's supposed to happen. Most of the time, people over discharge, they under discharge, and they're like, oh, I could have flown longer, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I'm just telling you right now that it's better to under discharge than it is to over discharge. If you over discharge beyond 3.5 volts per cell, you will damage the chemistry in the batteries if you do it multiple times and you do it repeatedly, it will reduce the battery's life significantly, okay? So again, for a 4S battery, fully charged, we're at 16.8, fully discharged, we're at roughly 14.5 at the lowest. And I'll talk about why 14.5 is the lowest in my terms because if you go by manufacturer's standards and it says 3.5 volts per cell, then technically you can drain a 4S battery down to 14 volts. I highly advise you not to do that and I'll talk about why later in the video. So again, like I said, we talked about flight packs. You don't wanna leave them fully charged or fully discharged for longer than about two days. So again, we leave these things charged at 16.8 volts or depending on the battery, if it's a 6S, it might be 25.2 volts. We don't wanna leave them fully charged for more than about two days. If I charge up, I wanna go out and fly the next day and it rains, I decide, hey, I might get to fly the next day and I get to fly, cool. If I don't get to fly, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce these things back down to storage voltage, which storage voltage is roughly 3.7 to 3.9 volts, okay? So for example, on a 4S battery, if I wanna take this from 6 
16.8 to storage voltage. I'm gonna bring it from 16.8 down to about 15 to 15.2 volts, all right? If I've flown these batteries and they've been discharged, and like I said, they're discharged, so they're, you know, 4S battery, it's at 14.5 or 14.8 volts. Well, I'm gonna to wanna to bring that back up to storage voltage if I'm planning on not flying for more than about two days. Like I said, if you're gonna fly the next day, you can just throw them on like they are, charge them up and go fly and you're good. But two days is kind of the threshold for me personally where I'm gonna say, hey, you know, I need to discharge these things to storage or I need to charge them back up to, uh, you know, storage from their discharge state. So again, that is flight packs. Now I mentioned earlier about these accessory packs. Do I treat them differently? Yes, I do. So for example, if I charge this Fat Shark battery to four, whatever, fully, fully charged, which is 8.4 volts at 4.2 volts per cell, it's a two cell. If I plug that into my goggles and, you know, I come home and it's at three point, uh, 9 volts or 4.2 volts, 4.1 volt, I haven't even used it or something like that, I'm not going to worry about it. I just leave it fully charged. These batteries are over-engineered and they've handled it. This battery is five years old. I've never worried about putting this thing at storage voltage. So for accessory batteries, don't worry about it. They're usually cheaper batteries anyways and they don't really care. But when you're talking about flight packs and you're talking about putting them through a lot of abuse, putting a lot of amps out of them and getting them hot, then you do want to make sure that you're trying to take care of them by putting them at storage voltage when you're not using them for prolonged periods of time. Okay, so now that we've talked about lithium polymer batteries and we've talked about the range of voltage which they like to work in and we've talked about manufacturers and how people usually tell you can fly them, I'm gonna tell you some secrets and some tricks that I've learned over the last five years of flying mini quads and flying RC in general so that you can hopefully help prolong the life of your batteries because at the end of the day, this battery was, I put little numbers on the back and that means seven of, or this was the fourth day of the seventh month of 2018. So on July 4th of 2018, 18, I started flying this pack. So this pack is six months old now. It's about February 2019. Um, and this battery has no puffing whatsoever and is a very healthy pack. Now six months for a flight pack is a long time. Now I will say that six months for a 6S pack is not that long because you're not drawing as many amps out of it where a 4S pack would probably last me between four and seven months depending on how hard I'm flying, especially a 1300 because you're drawing, you're drawing a lot of current, over 100 amps out of some of these batteries at points in time. So 4S is not gonna last as long because you're demanding more abuse out of it, but you know, 6S, six months of a battery, that's a long time. I've had 4S batteries last for six months. Now, why do they last that long for me? Some people are probably saying, oh, that's not a very long time, but people that do fly very hard and they understand that six months for one battery is a long period of time to be flying a battery. That's a long lifespan, especially if you're flying consistently. Well. I can tell you my secret is, again, I don't leave my batteries charged for more than two days fully charged and I don't leave them fully discharged for more than two days and I put them at storage voltage whenever I can. But the main thing that I can tell you is I don't take them down very far. At the beginning of the video, I said specifically 3.5 volts was pretty low per cell. Okay, well, 3.5 volts on a 4S is about 14 volts, all right? So, that's pretty low to me. Like I would land my mini quad at 14.8 or 15 volts. Anything below 14.8 volts on a 4S battery as far as when I'm coming in to land, 14.8 is super low to me. Now that's probably about 3.7 volts per cell, 3.8 volts per cell. And that's you know what most people would consider storage voltage. Well, I would consider that fully discharged. Why do I do that? Well, for the main part, or the main reason is, is 4S, for example, when you're flying a pretty high powered setup on 4S, you get a really good flight characteristic for about the first half of the flight. So usually for about a minute, minute and 10 seconds. Then the last half of the flight, you start compensating based on how much voltage sag you have. You might be flying differently. You might not be doing the same things that you were doing, or you might have to add throttle a lot sooner because you're having to deal with what's called voltage sag. When you're demanding a lot of a battery and the voltage is getting lower, you're draining the battery lower, you are having to deal with more voltage sag, which in turn changes how you fly the battery. With a 4S that is extremely prominent, and I can tell you from experience that when you get towards the last like 15, 20, 30% of the battery, it starts feeling like crap anyways. So I just always come in early and that roughly gave me about two minutes of balls to the wall flight time on my particular rig, which seems like a lot of flight time for most people. Most people would consider my rig a very efficient rig. So again, I'm landing at like 3.7, 3.8 volts per cell, around 15, 14.8, 15.2 volts per cell. 
Again, that is a round storage voltage, people would say, but that ultimately leads to me having a battery that's gonna last a lot longer because I'm not draining it down super low. And the fact is, is that when I do drain them down low, like say if I wanna fly a little bit longer, I'm doing something really cool and I wanna push it a little bit farther. Usually, anything below about 14.8 volts per, ce per cell actually starts to degrade extremely fast. So it will taper off extremely quickly and I will lose so much flight characteristic and so much performance that it's not even worth me flying. So bringing a voltage down to about you know 14 volts is completely not necessary and it will ultimately lead to you just killing the battery completely and having the quad fall out of the sky which drains the battery way below 3.3 volts per cell because it happens like that. So just keep that in mind. Landing a little bit early is not only going to save you that sag and all that nonsense that you deal with the end of a 4S battery, but it's also going to help prolong the life of your batteries. Now, people are definitely going to ask, why 6S? Why 4S? Why do we have these numbers and what do they mean? Well, I'm not going to get too deep into it on this particular video because we will have a video coming out hopefully soon, or I will have one coming out soon where it's going to be talking about 4S and 6S and the equivalency of both of them. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to make a super powerful 6S rig. We want to make a rig that's essentially the same power as the 4S rig, but it's more efficient because it has more more voltage, more torque, flight characteristics are more consistent over the entire battery because we have more voltage to deal with and we have more torque to deal with. Ultimately, the difference between the two is this is a lot more efficient. So say full throttle on a 6S battery on my aircraft would be about 65 amps. Full throttle on my 4S aircraft would be about 100 amps. So you can see the difference between performance. That's almost half a difference as far as amps. This battery is going to get a, be a lot cooler. It's going to have to not deal with as much abuse. It's not going to puff because I'm not pulling so much amperage out of it that it's killing it and it's not getting super hot on a regular basis. So that's probably why these batteries have lasted so long is mainly because they're not having to deal with as much abuse as you would on a 4S. So in a nutshell, beginners, 4S is perfectly adequate. You're probably not going to have to deal with voltage sag because you're probably not going to be staying in the air long enough to deal with it. 4S is extremely affordable and it's a, it's a very widely used thing. You're going to have a lot of people that can help you with this. You're going to have a lot of friends that already have 4S batteries. So it's definitely something that you should get if you're a beginner, mainly because it's a lot cheaper and it's also more readily available and the electronics to use it are also more readily available. So for beginners, 4S, if you really want the best and balls of the wall performance and you really care about having the most performance you can possibly get, 6S is where it's going to be. And yeah, that's about it. We'll talk more about 6S and 4S and talk about KVF motors and the adequate um, equivalencies between the two if you're trying to make a similar setup on 6S that you had on 4S and you want it to fly the same, but you want to have that added feel of more response and also no voltage sag over the entire battery, which is ultimately what four or what 6S gives you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about lithium polymer batteries and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>